At a first glance, there are a lot of YouTube videos explaining all about small 3x4 and 4x4 matrix keypads and their interfaces, whilst a handful of these actually talk about interfacing them to something like an Arduino or 8051 microcontroller. If you need an interface which is a bit more universal, then at the time of making this video, there are very few of these to be found. This video is therefore a quick helping hand suggestion for anybody who might want to use one of these inexpensive push button devices without having to go in any serious depth about how a matrix keypad actually works, which in itself is hardly rocket science. I've used this device myself several times in the past and therefore already have a couple of reliable and adaptable circuits to hand, which saves me having to design yet another variant. Here is the circuit I built just now, which I'm going to use for this demo before incorporating it into the piece of equipment it's destined for. A few years back, there was a keypad decoder IC available called the 74C922, but this appears to be discontinued, although there's still a few out there if you look around for one. I'm therefore going to use a small circuit here, using five easily obtainable ICs. The circuit may be either used with tri-state outputs for interfacing directly to a microprocessor, or used with the outputs permanently enabled like I'll be doing for this demo. Pin one of the 374 IC can be grounded if tri-stated outputs are not required, or used as a chip enable if the micro is being connected to it. A capacitor and resistor in the circuit eliminates any chance of there being any key bouncing occurring. A strobe output is available either positive or negative going. This may either be used to drive an interrupt or in the case of my demo circuit as a polling signal on the fifth data line of the interface of the micro. In this instance I shall use it for polling by masking bits 0 to 3 then anding the 8-bit byte red with an 01 to identify if the key is being pressed down. Obviously the same line can be used later on to show when the key depressed is finally released. Please note the circuit assumes that the keypad has the standard connections on its interface tracks i.e. four columns then four rows. Quick few words about the IC types being used. As per usual I use what I happen to have available to hand in my circuit. The HCT374 will almost certainly work with any 374 variant. The same applies to the LS161 counter. I successfully used the CMOS4093 instead of an HC132 quad Schmidt trigger NAND in an earlier version, but take note that the pinout of the two packs is different. Lastly, the decoded output from the matrix keypad will need to have its characters decoded by a simple lookup table. This is because the outputs of 0, 1, 2, 3 on the top line and 4, 5, 6, 7 on the second line and so on. Fortunately, it takes very little programming and a simple 16-bit lookup table to correct these uh, to have whatever you want your keypad to show. If turning the keypad into a hex device, you'll probably want to change the labels on the buttons from the star and hash to F and E respectively, for example. This, of course, is easily done in your lookup table. Another variant with this decoder is to use a couple of the spare lines available on the 374 interface chip. 0 to 3 are used for the keypad, with the fourth possibly being used as a polling line. This leaves at least three more lines currently with inputs tied to ground. Any of these can be used for extra input switches accessed by the micro when the keypad data is also accessed. Here we have our completed matrix keyboard decoder board with the five ICs as specified in the circuit diagram which we've shown you. You can see the connections at the bottom are to the um, matrix keyboard. The ones at the top are the four data lines coming out of the chip here. Um, and that's about all that you need to see. This, this one here is the strobe and the positive connections coming through to this crop lead here. And the um, 0 volts is there. And here we have the decoder board next to the keypad we'll be using. Just eight contacts here via the ribbon cable um, to the inputs here on the board itself. You don't have to make it as small as this. I made mine as small as this because I wanted to uh, fit it in a small space in the equipment it's going to go into. But obviously it's a bit fiddly making something up like that. It's probably better to make it a little bit larger. Here is the processor board which we'll be testing the decoder out on. Um, it actually has a Z80 at the top. This in fact is somebody who may have seen the Z80 um, project which we did before the five uh, videos for that. This is actually the same board with the A to D and the D to A. Except on this occasion all I'm doing is using one segment, uh, one, um, you know, sorry, section of this display 
and we're going to use the inputs coming in on the 244 um, from there. We're not using the ADD way or anything else. So if we turn it on, we should actually see something happen. Oh, we have a question mark. The question mark is simply waiting for an input from the keyboard. Um, that's all it'll do. Um, when we enter the keys in, it will change that to the um, button which you're pressing on the keyboard. So the program is very simple. It simply loops round and round and round. It's polling out, seeing when I push the key. And when I do, it takes it and it does its little bits and pieces, looks in the lookup table and puts the result in there. So I'm afraid there's nothing much more to do other than press Let's see, one. Here we have a one. Two, three, four. Oh, it's not four, it's A. That's what it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah, if you remember, this is in the lookup table because the um, it would otherwise be, if this was without using the uh, lookup table in here, it'd be naught, one, two, three. So we want it to be one, two, three, A. So that's what the lookup table is in that little bit of program. It's only 16 bit, uh, sorry, 16 bytes long. Then we have four, five, six, B, seven, eight, nine, C, asterisk, zero, hash, and D. That's a good demo, isn't it? It's very quick. Uh, just showing it, it does work. You can, you know, fiddle around with this and make it do what you want. So, so there's room for adding extra buttons. If you want a couple, I'll probably actually going to add another two buttons on this, which have nothing whatsoever to do with the uh, keyboard uh, decoder. That's why I haven't put them on there. But you can use those in addition to the keyboard and it will read the status of them from this chip when the processor actually accesses it. It'll read the keyboard and it'll read the um, the results of the switches as well, which actually is quite useful if you want to add a little bit of facility to that board. So there you are, that's the demos finished. I'll put up the circuit once more at the end and um, you can take a screen grab of that if you want to try it at least. Well, you can see it works and you can see the sort of performance you expect from it. Thanks for watching.